And that's what's so amazing about the tech field. Maybe not in other fields where it's more traditional, but in the tech field, there are unlimited possibilities. And with a little creativity, you can get a job with limited experience and no degree. So fairly quickly. What's happening, guys? It's Shane here. So today we are going to be interviewing Nicole, and she has seven years of IT experience. Right now, she is currently a network security engineer, and she has a YouTube channel as well. So I will go ahead and let Nicole introduce herself. Hey, guys. Um, so I'm Nicole, and I have seven years of IT experience, as Shane said, and I started off in the Army, um, and I've had uh, roles in network administration, system administration. I've worked with databases, virtualization. I've done everything. I've lived in multiple states. I worked overseas in Turkey for a while. Um, so I'm very well versed in infrastructure and IT ops. So. Well, thank you so much for coming on the channel today, Nicole. I think everybody's going to be able to learn a lot from you. Um, I'm, a, I'm a fan of your channel as well. That's how I found you. And uh, I thought you gave some really good insight as well and uh so basically i want to ask you some questions about you know people who would be potentially interested in getting into it so we're going to be talking about the career itself as well as you know certifications and the degrees that you would get in order to get into your career and your perspective on that so the first question i want to ask is going to be um, what degrees or education would you recommend getting for it related careers that that is a big question so there is no set education path for any of the tech fields because the field is so new that there are so many different routes that you can take so you can go to the traditional route and get a degree in IT and then after that you can get a job in IT and you can do that you can also join the military like I did uh, you get a GI Bill and they'll pay for your college and you also get experience does take a certain type of personality to deal with that. So I would strongly against it if you don't think you're that type of person. Um, you could get a certificate, uh, an IT cert. It, those are huge in the IT field. And then you could get a job from that because that verifies your knowledge. You could also just create your own experience and set up an LLC, uh, make your own projects, post YouTube videos on tutorials that you create and show that to a, a potential employer. And you can put that in your resume and be like, hey, I did this. Um, it's really up to you and your personality type. But there's so many different ways. You don't need a degree. You don't need a cert. You don't need military experience. You just really need to be able to sell yourself to an employer that you can solve their problems. And that's what's so amazing about the tech field. Maybe not in other fields where it's more traditional, but in the tech field, there are unlimited possibilities and with a little creativity, you can get a job with limited experience and no degree. So fairly quickly. Okay. That's some great insight. Um, what would you say actually matters when it comes to getting a job specifically uh, from the perspective of someone who maybe just graduated high school and they're looking to get into IT and the tech field in general, or maybe someone who already got their degree and they just graduated college. So what actually matters when it comes to getting that first job? There's so many various factors, but if you have a degree and you're looking to get into the field or even looking to change your field, I would say creating projects and creating your own experience. So there, there are many ways to do that and you can do it all in your home. You don't have to go anywhere to get the experience, but uh, I mean, Google is your best friend and you can create your own projects, put that on your resume um, and gain your own experience. Show an employer that you have a lot to offer to them. So not only can you learn tech, but you can also create videos and do all of these different tutorials. And most important, you can learn on your own and be resourceful. So those are really important skills for tech is you, you have to continuously learn on your own. Um, and that, that, definitely kind of portrays that. You can create your own experience by creating an LLC and then making YouTube videos uh, of tutorials. You can also create a GitHub if you want to do more security projects or web development or software development. Um, and then you can put that on your resume. You can link to your GitHub with your experience. Um, so honestly, that right there. And then 
that, that shows that you have resourcefulness, which is really important in IT, that you're eager to learn, and that it also shows what type of employee you be. So it's already demonstrating leadership uh, abilities right there. And that is exactly what employers want. Um, they don't want to tell you everything you need to do. They want you to think on your own and kind of think outside of the box. Uh, yeah. Yeah, one thing uh, when people you know ask me for advice in private, uh, a lot of the time I tell them that one of the best strategies you can use is there are certain things where you want to not stand out, right? It's a good idea to not stand out in certain areas to be yeah, normal, so to speak. And then there's other areas <laughs> where? where you you really do want to stand out, like it's extremely important. And uh, one mm -hmm. thing you can do that uh, to make yourself stand out in a positive way is just to try to get their attention in a creative way. So you could maybe make your own video in order to get their attention. You could do a project uh, to show them that you're able to teach yourself some of these skills, like you know the ability to make videos, for instance. That's a skill. You know, it takes a while uh, to teach yourself that. And if you're able to do that, teach yourself that, and do it in a creative way, chances are you're going to be able to take on a bunch of the other tasks that require you to think outside of the box. Uh, within the business itself. So it's just a great way to kind of demonstrate that uh, to a potential employer. And then you also kind of just stand out in general. I mean, you're the, the person who made the video. They, they don't even know your name. They're like, hey, what about the, uh, the video guy or something, you know? That's a great yeah. way to kind of stand out uh, from the crowd, so to speak. Um, but again, I don't want to, yeah. I don't want to like speak for you, but uh, that's kind of one thing. No, I, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep, you are right standing out but within the box you know like you don't want to make your resume colorful but you just want to show your skills you know you want to be like i'm the best at this kind of you know but not like i'm weird <laughs> and i'm going to cause problems <laughs> or I'm, I'm gonna try to i don't know but yeah exactly yeah, it, it, it is a that's one reason why i've never made a video about it because i feel like people would it's kind of general information and people would try to apply general information to like a specific job and they probably wouldn't do it right unless they got yeah. kind of advice directly from me. So that's one reason why I kind of don't include that in videos, but uh, uh, I've seen uh, it correctly before and I've seen people get jobs that are just like their dream job, like right away yeah. by doing that. So it's, it's definitely something you can do. Um, one thing I wanted to ask you about, Nicole, is uh, are there any pitfalls that people should specifically look out for when it comes to getting into IT? Yeah, so these were some of my pitfalls. Um, uh, I would just read, so I'm, I'm really big on reading. I love researching and I love reading and I just find it all fascinating, but I wouldn't do anything. I wouldn't apply these skills to tech. I would just continuously gain all of this knowledge but I would never apply it. So it wasn't, I did this for years, probably early career. For the first three or four years, I just learned stuff and read and watched YouTube videos, but I never set up a lab and actually did it. So when it came to actually applying that knowledge, it was just, it was just useless knowledge. It was like, a, there's, it's completely useless to have all this knowledge and not use it or know how to use it because I never did it in a lab. I just theoretically knew it. So that was my number one pitfall. My number two pitfall is I stayed at the help desk a little bit too long. Uh, you can kind of get stuck there and it pays well. And you're like, well, do I ever really need to leave the help desk? You're like, this is nice, but stay, you can get stuck at the help desk. So what, your goal when you get a help desk job, if that's where you start, is to get out of the help desk as fast as you can because you can just stay stuck there. You also don't need to spend a lot of money on a degree. I didn't, but some people spend like eighty, ninety, a hundred thousand dollars to get a help desk job or even a system administration job. You don't need any of that. Uh, I suggest WGU. Um, I have some reviews on it, but it's it's quick and uh, you can get a degree fast, and it's just functional. It's just it works for tech, maybe not for other fields, but for tech it does work. Um. And then also in this field, you can kind of get lazy because you get paid well. So you have, to, you have to motivate yourself to continuously learn new things and new skills. Otherwise, you're going to become outdated really fast. And that's also a benefit for anyone entering the field because the skills you learn are up to date. Whereas people who have been in the industry for 10, 20 years, 
their skills may be a little rusty. So, I mean, you're going to get replaced with the, the newer screw in the, the great business machine, uh, which is a pro and a con. So I would say those are the major pitfalls. So, you know, people, a lot of people who watch this channel, very young, sometimes they're in high school, sometimes they're early in college, and they're kind of at that point in their life where they don't necessarily know what job would be best for them. So uh, what type of personalities or, you know, personality type uh, traits uh, tend to be really good or tend to enjoy this type of career? I always liked puzzles. And so someone who likes puzzles would do well in this career. Um, and also you have to be very curious. I was always curious about everything around me and I loved to learn. I was just continuously learning as a high school student and a college student. Um, and in this field, it, it really satisfies that because there's so much to learn. And once you get in a little bit, it just opens up a whole new world of just tech and it's just absolutely fascinating. And then you can apply those principles to other things in your life, like business and relationships and it gets really nerdy. Uh, so curiosity, number one. Number two, someone who can kind of go with the flow, um, not too rigid and kind of it needs to be this way because in tech, you're gonna, you're gonna destroy things in a sense and you have to be okay with that and you just have to go with the flow. You'd be like, oh, I broke this and then you just have to fix it really fast or, or something will come up or a customer or a network will go out or someone hacks your network, you just have to be like, oh, this happened. Now how can I fix it? And so someone who's solution oriented and not problem oriented, because the problems are going to happen. You just have to find a solution and just be like, I'm done. All right, let's just fix this. So someone who can be like water, someone who's curious, someone who likes puzzles. Uh, but I would say those are the three things. And then also someone who's resourceful and self-reliant, because it is a lot of figuring things out on your own. Not, someone's not really gonna tell you what to do. My boss has no idea what I do. So I mean, they're not much help. And then you're continuously thrown in new situations to where you have to learn really fast. Um, and that comes as you get more experience, you can learn things faster. But yeah, I could say those things. Got it. What about um, introvert versus extrovert? Do you think that applies here or does it not matter? That's a big thing. So I'm more introverted and I can go days without talking to someone. But if you're an extrovert, you may have issues because you're going to be surrounded by introverts. I've seen it happen. I've seen extroverts trapped in introverts' jobs and it's not good. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not saying you can't succeed. You can become an IT manager and there's there's roles that do deal a lot with people, like desktop support, help desk, things of that sort. Um, but you're going to have a lot of quiet time, and you're, <laughs> you're going to be around people who also enjoy the quiet. So it, I'm not excluding, like, if you enjoy working with people, I'm not saying tech isn't for you. It just may be different. It just, uh, I don't know. I don't want to deter anyone here. You know what I mean? I don't want to be like, well, you're an extrovert, so you're going to do terrible. Uh, uh, I don't know. You just have to know uh, when to flip it on and off. <laughs> what, what I've found just looking at different careers is if it's a really common career where there's just like hundreds of thousands or millions of jobs, it really doesn't matter all that much what your personality type is because you're going to find like a sub career within there that's yeah. going to fit your personality. So for instance, exactly. there was, there was uh, one girl I knew who went into accounting and she didn't really like doing bookkeeping and yeah. you know, she thought she wanted to do it. She didn't like bookkeeping, but there's so many accounting jobs out there. She was able to find one that she really liked and it was more in the recruiting exactly. side of things, right? Where she's interacting yeah. with people. And there you go. Like if you go into certain careers that are extremely niche, you might find yourself stuck there. But if you go into one where there's just like a lot of subfields, there's a lot more flexibility. So I kind of usually recommend people do that if they're not 100% sure what they want to do because exactly. it gives them more flexibility. Yeah. No, I completely agree with that. Uh, there's tons upon tons of jobs. Like, I'm sure there you could do business and then do like the business planning and that's or work with stakeholders for IT infrastructure. There are, there are definitely jobs uh, 
yeah, for everyone in IT. Some people who like compliance and and you could definitely do career changes too. So into IT with just a few skills, gain a few skills, and then you can make a transition to IT pretty easily also. Okay, so for some of the viewers who maybe, you know, are thinking about going into IT, how would you recommend them finding out if this is a good career for them or not? Something that I wish I had done was just do it. I would just get your hands dirty and then go through various courses. So maybe like web development. I personally don't. I've done it and it's just too much sitting right there and then typing and then the semicolons. It drove me nuts because I took some web developing things. I, I tried databases and I was like, this gives me a headache. Networking, I have my master's in cybersecurity. I mean, I, w I was all over the place, GIS. <laughs> uh, just go ahead and um, just do things, honestly. And, and then there are a lot of online learning, low cost things that you could do that, such as Pluralsight, and you could, uh, or Udemy, and then just go through their labs and see if you enjoy it and do as much as you possibly can. Um, the traditional college route just teaches you memorization and someone who's just coming from college it took me a while to get over that I'm like what uh, I have to do stuff I can't just take tests and memorize all these facts and then I have to apply it I was really lazy it took me a while to get over that it's like I have to I have to apply my knowledge <laughs> um, but yeah just go ahead and do it don't spend too much time learning about these concepts or the book knowledge of it just just dive deep down as many topics as you can and also talk to people in that field so i'm in it i wouldn't be able to really tell you what being a software engineer is like um or i wouldn't be able to tell you what cabling like they're cable dogs uh in it uh because i i can't speak from that but there, there's just so many jobs i guess but yeah so talk to people and Try as many different things as you can for free or low cost. Don't, don't spend $5,000 on a course. That's a fantastic uh, suggestion, especially the, the course one. Um, I always recommend just in general, um, you know, I give kind of like general advice on my channel, but I always tell people yeah. I, it's almost like a broken record at this point. I think people get annoyed when I say in my video, but always try to contact somebody in the field that you're looking into you know, you can get a hold of them maybe via LinkedIn, yeah. for instance, and just ask them what they would recommend. So yeah. you're going to find that for some uh, career paths, you ask them, hey, do I need a degree to get into this? And they're going to be like, for sometimes they're going to be like, absolutely, without a doubt, you need a degree. Other times they're going to be like, uh, sometimes you need a degree, but you know, it helps, but you don't absolutely need it. And then other times they're going to be like, you do not need to get a degree. Don't get a degree. Mm -hmm. Right. And the only yeah. way going to know if that's important is to just reach out and ask people because something that might have been true 20 years ago is not true right now uh, there's a lot of degrees that in my opinion were really good 20 30 years ago in my research and they're really just not that great right now for certain career paths that you want to go down for instance and then I really like your suggestion about just trying stuff out online for kind of like cheap or free I think that's great well, there's like teachable Udemy um Coursera is good. Treehouse? Treehouse, yeah. And then you said plural site? Plural site. That's what plural I use. Well. Yeah. Plural Got site it. is really good. Got it. Yeah. So those are some great resources. Just get on there and try to do some projects. And then um your suggestion for maybe just recording yourself and putting it on YouTube as well, just to kind of challenge yourself. I think that's a great suggestion as well. And uh, if you hate doing it, you probably shouldn't get into it. <laughs> don't, yeah. don't do it for the money, yeah. guys. Not imp not, don't do it for the money. <laughs> there's, no, there's nothing worse because I've had jobs that I've despised. There's nothing worse than having doing something 40 hours a week that you just can't stand because you're miserable and everyone around you is miserable too because you're miserable <laughs> it's just yeah make sure to try it out and also you're right talking to people on linkedin i was always afraid to reach out to people i was always very scared um but honestly people want to help and it's not something i understood i was like why people want to help me but it, it actually probably it's like a gift to them to be able to help you 
now I understand it a little bit more, but I was still afraid at 18, 19 to ask anyone, like, what am I supposed to do? I don't know. Um, yeah, just talking to someone, people in the field is the best way by far. And you may think your teachers um, have a lot of knowledge. I'm not trying to go against teachers, but there's nothing like someone who has working experience in the field to be able to tell you what it's like. Teachers teach, uh, but they're not going to give you insight on the day-to-day -day life and whether or not it's suited for you because they just teach the, the knowledge of it. So that's an important thing. Yeah, that was a great suggestion. Yeah, one thing I found uh, with certain careers, I've talked to people about this, is uh, I'm not saying all counselors, all teachers are like this, but sometimes yeah. college counselors will give you advice that sort of benefits the college. Yeah. Because they, yeah, want, they want you to that. come back and, and get like a master's exactly. or a doctorate, right? And, and, then some, and then sometimes yeah. same with teachers. Sometimes same with teachers, right? They're maybe they're they honestly think their advice is good and maybe it was good five years ago 10 years ago 15 years ago but until mm -hmm. you actually talk to someone who's in the field and doing it you're not going to get the best advice and i always recommend talking to several people if you can just to get like a balanced perspective on it as well definitely and different genders too so i'm a female in a, a masculine environment so my perspective will be way different than a male in kind of this in like a male dominated field so like if anyone wants to reach out to me and ask what it's like to be a female in it i'm probably that person but if you're like well what's it like to be a male in a male they couldn't help you there so it's important to take that into consideration too so absolutely yeah. and by the way if i didn't mention this before uh, everyone I'll, I'll of course link her youtube channel down in the description and if you have any questions on this video or, or just comments, criticisms, concerns, any way we could make these videos better, for instance, uh, just uh, comment those down below. And of course, Nicole, you can feel free to answer the comments. You would probably give much better answers than me, of course. Um, but I try to answer every comment. It's been a little overwhelming lately, but I, I try to get to everyone. But uh, yeah, uh, that is a pretty, pretty good idea. And of course, you could comment on her channel and she would answer them there as well. So next section we're going to get into is going to be the yes or no section. So if it's not a, if it's not a yes or no answer, you can give like a very short answer like but we're going to try to keep this under a sentence if possible that's my goal with this section <laughs> so, okay got you <laughs> do grades matter in college for absolutely IT? Not. absolutely not no no just get rid of that whole concept of grades no actually i think it's a deterrent so if you're an f student it's better <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was a that was a very straightforward answer. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I feel strongly about that topic. <laughs> <laughs> um, how about clubs? Do you think it's worth your time to be joining clubs in college? Is that going to help you with getting a job? It's good for meeting people. So yes, um, if the people can help you get a job, yes. If if it's like the drinking club, probably not. No. <laughs> yeah how about uh getting leadership positions within those clubs do you think that's something that's uh is going to help you quite a bit or not it will help you because it develops your self-esteem and your your ability to communicate with people and those types of skills and that will help you get a job so yes how about internships would uh our internships impor important do they matter yeah they would help a lot in securing a job and then this is probably kind of along the same line but work experience is that important yes but you can create your own work experience and then networking how important is networking in a field full of introverts <laughs> man man that one's hard it is so important but i understand if you don't want to do it at all <laughs> um it is important but i didn't know anyone in my field uh, so in IT, there's so many jobs that you don't, I don't want to say you don't need to network, but uh, it, it, get a low competition, high demand job, and you won't need to network. Yeah, there you go. Got it. And then how about skills? How important are skills? 
very important. Number one, you need you need to have skills and you need to know how to use them. Got it. And then um, this is sort of along the same line of as you know, getting experience, but just kind of like doing projects on the side, like we were talking about maybe doing YouTube videos, for instance, how important is that? If you have no experience, it's very important. If you have experience, it becomes less important. But unless you're trying to change your niche. Got it. And then is the school you go to, is that important? Is that something people really care about in the IT field? Uh, no, not at all. Most of my coworkers don't have degrees. Okay. So I know this is pretty difficult. Uh, I sent you the list because this is a lot to kind of just picture in your head, but uh, <laughs> can you rank from most important to least important uh, grades, clubs, leadership positions, internships, work experience, networking skills, and projects. Oh, projects and the school that you go to. So the first one would be work experience, of course. Um, and then I would say internships. Uh, and then your skills would be second, but it kind of goes with your work experience a little bit. So you gain skills at your work experience um, and internships. And then below that would be projects. Uh, and then below that would be networking and then clubs. And then the school you go to. And then I would say your grades. Your grades don't matter at all. So if you're a D student, don't feel bad about yourself. It's totally okay. Um, you can still get into tech if you're a D student. Uh, yeah, I would say that. Some of them go together though. So you can gain skills from work experience projects and internships. So, but the, the brand name of your school matters none in tech, it wouldn't even, hmm, it's kind of outdated. Why does it matter? I don't know. <laughs> Is that a good answer? Did I answer that well? Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, that's absolutely okay. fantastic. Yeah. Um, awesome. You know, I've, I've found that uh, you ask this question to different people in different fields, you'll get literally the op, like, it'll be flipped opposite. Really? Women. Yeah. Yeah. Your grades like I, matter? I, I asked, yeah, in some fields, your grades really, really do matter. Like you'll actually put it on your resume. And then I would say in most fields, they don't. But there are some fields where you, you it legitimately will be on your, your resume or your CV. <laughs> so it, it really does matter. Yeah. And then yeah. some fields where the Girl. school you go to, the school you go to really matters. Like if, if you're a Girl. lawyer, for instance, a lot of the time, the school you go to matters like a lot. So I wouldn't do well in those fields at all. That would just anger me. To be honest, I would be so angry. I was like, <laughs> because I would also just say this, like your school is pointless and your grades don't matter. Uh, that's wild because it's kind of outdated. If you think about it, school is outdated. You can get all this information online, but I guess like in nursing or a medical field, I can understand why the traditional route so it's not complete. In tech, though, that's kind of my realm. In tech, it doesn't matter. Other fields, I'm just never going to enter them. I'm never going to become a lawyer. Is there anything else uh, that we didn't go over that you think might be important here? I do. So when choosing your niche, uh, to, if you're interested in finding a job really quickly with little experience, I would choose one where the skills gap is really high. So for instance, cybersecurity, uh, cloud and data science are in IT, one of the, the highest job niches with the, a huge skills gap. So you're gonna be able to pick up a job a lot faster than say if you go into networking, which has been around for 20 years, still a skills gap, still a, a skills gap, just not as high as uh, data science, cybersecurity and cloud. Um, so I would mess around with those technologies and there's so many niches underneath those that you might be able to find one that you like. Yeah, seems like uh, data analysts, data scientists, that one is highly requested in my comments section. So uh, if anybody's watching this and they are a uh, data analyst or a data scientist, go ahead, send me an email. We can maybe do an interview. Um, because that one seems to be very high in demand in the comments section. Oh, those are the most introverted people too. So it could be a little bit more difficult to find them. <laughs> I, I actually did a poll on my channel and I think something like 75% of the people who watch my channel are introverted. So yeah, I, I can kind of see that. <laughs> That's fascinating. 
<laughs> That's very cool. Awesome, Nicole. Well, thank you so much again for coming on today. Thank you for uh, having patience there. And uh, where can the audience find you, Nicole? Yeah, so I have a YouTube channel that I just started, and it's Nicole Aness. And like you said, it's probably linked below. Um, and there I'll be creating videos on how to change your career into tech or how to get your first job in tech. So I will be going over all of those topics. Thank you again so much, Nicole. And uh, we will see you next time. Have a good one. Awesome. Oh, thank you so much, Shane. See you. <laughs>